Special shout out to Amaze for sponsoring this video. Enter for your chance to win an amazing Tesla Model S performance and $20,000 cash while helping some pretty amazing charities along the way. You probably don't think about them very often, but the lithium ion battery is at the center of so much of our technology. From iPods back in the day, to laptops and smartphones, they're part of our world and they keep us connected. And since they were first researched by John Goodenough, Stanley Whittingham, Rashid Yazami, and Koichi Mizushima back in the 70s and 80s, to eventually becoming commercially produced by Sony in 1991, they've improved in terms of energy density, how fast they can charge and discharge, how safe they are, and probably most critically, they've become incredibly affordable. Once Tesla started to build electric vehicles and built the Gigafactory, the level of production around the world has gone up by such a factor that prices have come down to a point where 300 mile range electric vehicles are completely viable. But as great as today's batteries are, they're starting to hit some limitations and they're not gonna be able to get a whole lot better in terms of energy density and life cycles without a huge breakthrough. And that breakthrough is the solid state battery. To understand why the solid state battery is going to be one of the most innovative breakthroughs of the 21st century, we have to talk about batteries in general. All batteries are comprised of electrodes where the actual energy is connected to, an anode and a cathode. The anode is the negative terminal and the cathode is the positive, and they are separated by a separator, a layer that keeps the two from contacting and short circuiting. When the battery is in use, electrons break free of the lithium and transfer through the electrode and over a cable, while the now lithium ion is free to move through the separator. And to allow this transfer, there has to be an electrolyte. And in the case of today's batteries, we have a liquid or gel electrolyte. This electrolyte allows the transfer of lithium ions through the separator and from the anode to the cathode and vice versa. But the liquid electrolyte has some great advantages in terms of design. You can wrap it tightly into a cylindrical cell like Tesla does, or you can build them into pouches or prismatic cells just as easily. And that liquid is really flexible in terms of how the battery architecture is to be built. The liquid electrolyte also acts as a great contact between the anode and the cathode, especially as the battery is charging and discharging. As the current is drawn from or into the battery, it's gonna get hot. And as a result, there's gonna be some thermal expansion of the different materials in the cell. But the beautiful part about the liquid electrolyte is that it's able to cope with this and allow these materials to stay in strong contact and maintain those ion pathways to keep a healthy and sustainable battery. That sounds great, but there is a problem. The liquid electrolyte is really dangerous. It's highly flammable. If you've ever seen a cell phone catch on fire, it's probably the electrolyte. Another really big issue with the liquid electrolyte is the formation of dendrites, which are whiskers that form when the lithium and the electrolyte material combine. And if these whiskers grow big enough, they could potentially rupture the separator and cause a short circuit and even fires. So then the answer is solid state. And as the name implies, the solid state battery ditches the liquid electrolyte in favor of a solid state electrolyte or SSE. Before I continue, I want to take a quick moment and say thank you to our sponsor, Omaze, a company that allows you to try your hand at winning some pretty amazing prizes like the Tesla Model S Performance and $20,000, all while helping some incredible charities like Give Power. So you know there's two things I love. It is Tesla's and solar. And you can actually work and help in both cases here with Omaze. With the Tesla Model S performance, you're actually getting the car and the taxes and shipping even are covered. Omaze has teamed up with Give Power to fund solar water farms in regions of Colombia. These water farms purify salt water from the ocean in a sustainable way and desalinate it, providing a sustainable and renewably powered drinking water solution to many living in brutally dry climates. So help support the channel and enter for your chance to win by visiting www.omaze.com tbdv. In a world with solid state batteries, we're gonna have a solid electrolyte which will act as both the separator 
and the electrolyte, thus increasing the amount of volume available for the actual anode and cathode. The SSE can actually work at higher voltages without breaking down compared to a liquid electrolyte. They're naturally flame retardant and they can operate at higher temperatures as well. And all this comes together in a battery that has the theoretical potential of 10 times the energy density. So if the Tesla Model 3 of today can go 300 miles, a solid state electrolyte battery Tesla could go 3000 miles. Rather than having to fill up between Southern and Northern California, I could drive to New York and not even have to fill up. So if solid state electrolyte batteries are so great, where are they? And why aren't they already in our devices today? Well, the answer to that is they are very hard to manufacture currently. But at the same time, they are around today. Actually, pacemakers and other medical equipment have solid state batteries today. So in the spectrum of engineering and scientific advancement, there's usually two types of technologies on the horizon. One that is just physically not possible. And the second is one that is not commercially viable. So for example, nuclear fusion would solve all of our energy challenges for the rest of our time, but it is physically not possible today. We just can't create the types of temperature and pressures required for nuclear fusion. On the other hand, solid state batteries are actually possible today, but they are incredibly expensive and hard to manage and they are not commercially viable. There's an entire scientific study around the choice for the electrolyte material. There are inorganic solid state electrolytes like sulfides and oxides. You have solid polymer electrolytes like crystalline polymers. And if that wasn't complicated enough, there's even a composite class of electrolyte. All of these different materials have different pros and cons. Some of them last longer, make better contact, have better ion passage, but maybe they degrade or they have other stability issues. Two common types of electrolyte materials are ceramic and glass. John B. Goodenough, who was one of the fathers of the lithium-ion battery, along with Maria Braga from the University of Porto, actually published a paper that outlines a glass solid state electrolyte battery. And some of the preliminary results are really promising. But the challenges go beyond just the electrolyte choice because there's actually a challenge and a huge hurdle at every single interface. First and foremost, you have to have ions be able to transfer through the cathode material, then through and to the surface of that material. And then there's the interface between the cathode and the electrolyte. That interface is also tricky. And then the ion has to pass through the electrolyte and then to the interface between the electrolyte and the anode and then through the anode. In nature, Interfaces like this, like hard changes in material or hard changes in temperature or pressure aren't really common and they're not easy to overcome. What's much more easy to handle is a gradual change. So that's where these interfaces are very tricky. And there's some interesting ways to solve it. For example, if you were to inject some of the electrolyte material into the cathode, especially near the interface and slowly phase it out further out, then you would allow the material to have a more gradual step from cathode to electrolyte. And the same would be true from the anode perspective, where you could inject the electrolyte material into the anode, allowing for a more gradual pathway instead of hard breaks in the material interfaces. But these interfaces are all very difficult. If I haven't convinced you of just how complicated these are yet, let's just talk about the cathode interfacial reaction. So there's an innate chemical reactivity between the high voltage cathodes and the SSEs that result in the formation of transitional metals and oxides and other undesirable products on the cathode SSE interface, increasing cell polarization and limiting rate capability. Sounds complicated, right? Yeah, and it is. And the answers to this are to combat it with various layers and coatings that would help to alleviate this. For example, a 20 nanometer layer thick LTO lithium titanate oxide coating could reduce cathode interfacial resistance by an order of magnitude. But that has its own challenges and it goes on and on. And there are hundreds if not thousands of universities and companies around the world trying to solve this problem because a world with solid state electrolyte batteries is going to be game changing, especially for transportation. You can imagine every car suddenly being able to go thousands of miles with a very small and lightweight battery pack would open the doors to a whole new class of EVs, small runabouts around town, little hatchbacks, two doors, cheap, economic, affordable cars. Airplanes, imagine if you could take a transatlantic flight with 
two, 300 passengers and fly 2,000 miles on batteries. Those are the kinds of things that would be possible if we could move from a liquid to a solid state electrolyte. So at this point in the video, you're probably thinking, how far out are they? Are they gonna be coming out next year? Five years, 10 years, 50 years, 100 years? Well, to that, there is some good news. Toyota was actually planning to unveil a solid state electrolyte battery vehicle at the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. But with what's happening around the world right now and that being canceled, it's hard to know if they're still gonna have some sort of event to unveil the automobile. But this would be huge news from a company like Toyota who used to be the world's biggest car manufacturer who has shown no interest in making electric vehicles. And it's not just Toyota. Hyundai is working with ionic materials on solid state batteries. Volkswagen recently increased its stake in QuantumScape, a developer of solid state batteries. And Mercedes-Benz even showed off their avatar concept car with a solid state battery at a car show last year. So we have seen this before, but that still doesn't answer the question of how far out are they from a commercial perspective? Because Toyota, I can assure you, is not gonna have a mass produced solid state electrolyte battery vehicle next year. It might actually not even be for about five years. But with Tesla becoming the largest automaker by market capitalization, there's gonna be a huge increasing necessity and demand for battery research and technology. And you can be assured that companies will rise to meet that demand. That's just how the markets work. While solid state batteries are not gonna be ready this year or next year, I think five years is a pretty realistic timetable, especially with the level of innovation and research that's happening. Remember that we have this. This isn't some pie in the sky idea. We have solid state batteries today. The question now is, can we make them reliable, charge over and over, allow for good contact at the interfaces and work for thousands of cycles and be safe while they do it? And that's the question that every automaker might be toying with. If you're Tesla, you have no other cars that you've ever made. So for you, the question is simple. Take today's battery technology and build cars. And they've done just that. But if you're Toyota, are you just waiting for a world where solid state batteries are available before you build EVs? Is that what they're waiting for? It could be. And maybe other companies are following suit too. Because remember, when we do have solid state batteries, companies that are full speed ahead on current tech are gonna have to retool and completely change their manufacturing process in order to accommodate the new materials and processes required. So if you're Toyota, maybe you're thinking, we make gas cars today, and we'll keep doing that until a world where solid state batteries are online and we'll switch then. And let's hope that that's what they are planning to do. And that when this does happen, that they will build electric vehicles at large. But one thing is for sure, Tesla's not gonna wait and neither should you. Today's batteries are safe and reliable and long lasting. The electric vehicles of today can last 300,000 miles. Their drivetrains and motors, maybe even a million miles. But the point is, you could always wait for the next thing. And if you're thinking, I'm gonna wait until solid state batteries before I buy an EV, all right, that's your, your call. But I would say, there's no harm in buying a car that has batteries today. And in five or eight years, when it's time for your next car, you would upgrade then. And most likely, there's gonna be a slew of options that have solid state batteries in them. And so in closing, that's what makes the story of the solid state battery bittersweet. The engineering and science is incredibly complicated, but incredibly fulfilling. And I bet you the guy or girl who figures this out and wins the Nobel Prize is gonna be remembered for the rest of their lives as a person who brought us solid state batteries. But the solid state battery is also used as a PR move by companies to show people, hey, we're cool. We're doing great cutting edge research, whether or not they actually are. So it's hard to know how many of these companies are really serious about battery technology and innovation and how many are just trying to grab headlines. Remember when Kodak introduced a blockchain for some reason? And most believed it was just a ploy to drive up their stock price, which it did for a short period of time. So the solid state battery can be used in a similar way to kind of drive enthusiasm and excitement, whether or not you actually have any plan of actually delivering. But I'm increasingly optimistic because I think the person who solves this is gonna be in for a huge windfall and that batteries are gonna be the backbone of the entire transportation sector in the next 50 years. Thanks so much for watching. I toyed with the idea of making this really involved and scientific and keeping it topical. Um, and I'm still really not sure how I landed on this one. Let me know in the comments if you like this video, if you want me to get more in depth or less in depth. I think our viewership is pretty broad and there's probably a little bit of both, 
but this is a fascinating topic. I love solid state batteries. I'm really bullish on them. I think they're gonna be a huge game changer. And I think most people put it between five and 10 years out. And I'm actually on the five year side. I think in five years we'll have them. So I have an electric vehicle today and I'm pretty confident my next one will have solid state batteries in it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss our future videos. Hit like and share this video with anybody you think might enjoy it. I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.